Now, as of now, we've only really spoken about one-way elementary reactions, in which reactants become products in a single forward step. Now we're going to look at complex reactions, and we're going to find the rate laws for complex reactions. Now remember, in complex reactions, reactants convert to products in more than one step. So the mechanism of our conversion will require more than one step. Now let's look at the following complex reaction. This is the overall reaction in which five molecules, two of these guys, one of this guy, and two of these guys, react to produce four moles of this guy and one mole of this guy. So let's break this overall net reaction into its individual steps. So step one is the following. <coughs> one mole of hydrogen peroxide reacts with one mole of this guy in a slow step producing one mole of hydroxide and one mole of HOI. Now this slow step will be important in determining the rate law and we'll see in a second why. Now, the second step is the following. This intermediate, or this intermediate, reacts with one mole reactant to produce, again, one mole of hydroxide and one of our products. Now, notice that this is one of our products. So, step two is responsible for producing this product, namely this guy. And now, these two guys, two moles of hydroxide, finally react with two moles of hydronium to produce our four moles of water, the second product. So the second step is responsible for producing one of the uh, products, while the third step is responsible for producing the second type of product. Now, let's go back to this step. Now, relative to the rates of these two steps, this is a very, very, very slow step. And in fact, these steps can be assumed to be instantaneous, very quick. So, what's the significance of this slow step? Well, this slow step is called the rate determining step. And this step limits the rate at which products are produced. And this equation, or this reaction, can be used to find the rate law. Now remember, the rate law can only really be found experimentally via results. But, this is a second way with which you can find the rate law but you still need to actually find the rate law using the results and then you can check the two and see if they coincide and usually for the most part they will coincide so, so this is a second way that you could find rate laws in complex reactions by using the rate law for the slow step the rate determining step so since this is a bimolecular elementary reaction we can use the coefficients as the exponents in other words our rate of reaction is equal to K, our rate constant, times the concentration of hydrogen peroxide, times the concentration of iodine. And each of the exponents is one because we have one mole of this guy and one mole of this guy react to produce these two intermediates. And this is indeed a balanced equation. So, once again, the reason we're allowed to find the rate law so quickly and without experimental results is because step one is an elementary bimolecular reaction with an overall reaction order of two. In other words, this has one coefficient and a second coefficient, so one plus one, two. And that's why. Now, once again, once you find this guy, you have to check to make sure this is in fact a rate law by finding the rate law using experimental results for this bimolecular um, elementary reaction.